Hey folks, Ty Cohen here from KindleCashflow.com and today I've got an extra special guest. I've got someone that has actually been part of a, a Kindle Cashflow community for several years and I thought it would be awesome to get her on to uh, kind of pick her brain a little bit and, and, and talk about some of her experiences as a Kindle publisher. I know she started and then stopped and I think she's back at it now again. But before we jump into that, make sure that you enter yourself in to win some cool prizes by subscribing, liking, and commenting on the com content that we have here. So we're giving away some really cool prizes here, Linda. We've got some Apple Watches that, that we've given away here. We uh, we actually just gave away some computers last week. We've got some uh, Apple AirPods. I don't know if nice. you guys can see those. Um, and then we have some MacBook Airs. We actually have two different MacBook Airs. So we have a rose gold, and then we have a silver one we actually gave one of these silver ones away last week to uh, one of our members in the kindle castle community michael lopez i don't know if you saw that or not and then we have some amazon gift cards that range in denomination from 25 dollars all the way up to 500 dollars. so you can enter to win if you're watching this or listening on podcast by subscribing to the channel right now by liking or by commenting on anything that Linda and I talk about. Um, and make sure you go over to kindlecashflow.com to get a copy of my new book, Kindle Publishing Secrets. In this, we share some really cool things as it relates to Amazon publishing and digital publishing in itself. So with that said, now that I'm out of breath, I can introduce my guest today, Linda Allen, um, who's coming all the way from California. I'm on the, the East Coast here, North Carolina. She's in California. Linda, tell me a little bit about yourself. I know that you've been in the Kindle Cashflow community for a while. You probably, I think you got the first version of Kindle Cashflow when it was actually in DVD. Did you or no? I did. You did? I okay. Did. I did. Um, and I looked the other day, my first Kindle book I published in January 2012. So I must have gotten your program October 2011 or so because it, it was pretty quick before I got my, when I got my first book out. Wow, very cool. Yeah. All right, so October 2011, and I'm going to take some notes here. So before we jump into that, like, did you have any background as a writer, as an author, or what, like, what, what was your background prior to Kindle Publishing? Well, I worked for the government, and uh, I was always looking for something, though, so that I could leave my job. So I spent, probably starting 25 years ago, I started trying to figure out a way to make extra money. Um, and then I saw, I don't know how I saw your email, but I did one day and I saw it. And I watched you talk about Kindle and your success. And it really hit me. And I thought, gosh, I could see the, the big picture of it. And so I, I, um, I sent for it. I think it was a thousand dollars back then. Yep. And, but I thought this is okay. It's going to be very worth it. And it, it sure was. So very cool. Very cool. No, I didn't have any writing um, skills, but you said you don't have to be a writer. And I thought that's very cool. Although I am pretty good at writing, but I didn't want to do it uh, myself. So um, I, I did a couple books by myself, but I'd like to outsource them too. It's uh, if you get a good writer, um, which I found, um, then you can get several books written by that person. And it's great. That's what I did. So you and tend to short too. They're only they're only like twenty five to forty pages long. Yeah. Yep. And so so you tend to to you you're not writing, and that was my my thing too. I I think that I'm a pretty decent writer when I'm in the mood to write, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, like in the zone to write, but it's not something that I like to do. Right. So as far as public, like I wouldn't see myself writing multiple books not that there's anything wrong with that because we have a ton of students that actually write their own content but i'm like you i i use outsourcers so ghostwriters so so being someone that is not an author you're not a writer although you said that you you don't mind writing and you are good at it did that seem foreign to you like getting books created by someone else a ghostwriter or an outsourcer did it did it initially seem like it was something that was going to be difficult, expensive, or what? I'm curious as to what your thought process was like. Well, when I 
when I listened to you that first time you were doing it and you were making pretty good money, I thought that makes so much sense. If you can uh, find somebody that's good for your, um, to write the book and then to get a good cover person, which I got, um, got right away. He did all my covers for my books. Um, the same person, I got a great person to do that. Um, I, so that's, that's what I did. Um, you know, I, again, I did write some of them myself because uh, from personal, some things that I went through in my life and I did write those books. Right. Um, and those I had to write because that was my, those were my experiences. But um, it seemed watching your, um, the CDs that we, that we got, the DVDs, I, I, I knew that I could do it because that's what the training was. And so when I started, uh, I started with Upwork, which now is, uh, I mean, excuse me, it was um, Odesk. It was Odesk. <laughs> it was Odesk. And, yep. Not too many people would know that. Yeah. And um, I started way back then. And, but there's people out there that, are, that will do it. And, and I, and you have to, you have to look sometimes, you know, you yeah. don't get it right the first time all the time, but if you just stick to it, you'll find a good writer. 